G'day everyone and welcome to Phillip Island, a wet and windy Phillip Island overnight. The sun's out at the moment but that may change as the day goes on. What a fantastic final day of action here. We've got around two of the Shannon's Nationals here at Phillip Island with to tell us all about it, Graham Satala, the uh, Operations Director for <laughs> Shannon's Nationals. How are you, Graeme? Yeah, thanks, Tony. Yeah, well, it's been a, a wonderful weekend so far. The weather gods have sort of smiled on us. And, and after some heavy rain last night, we've got a beautiful blue sky to start the day. There's plenty of supercars of a different kind here this weekend, obviously. Uh, some of Europe's best supercars are, are here in the major race this afternoon, the 500 kilometre Australian Endurance Championship race, round one of their championship. Now, I said it's the second round of the year, and it is, but it's the 100th round of the Shannon's Nationals, which is an amazing uh, milestone. Absolutely, Tony, and we're very proud to be here on the 100th occasion of the Shannon's Nationals. So it started way back uh, 2006. Wakefield Park was our very first round. Uh, it was the CAMS National Racing Championship then. Shannon's joined as major sponsor approximately two years later, I believe, and they've been a fantastic support to CAMS and the category uh, ever since. I'm with Ken Collier, ca category manager for the GT Championship, and nothing excites me more than seeing all those cars lined up here in pit lane at Phillip Island. Certainly a beautiful thing, isn't it? We're just about to go out on round one of the Australian Endurance Championship, and all the drivers are very excited about this potentially three-hour race. Now, the format here, uh, explain it to us and why, uh, the, why the drivers like it so much. I think that Endurance Championships are really, or Endurance Racing is really what these GT cars are built for. So having two driver, a two driver team, usually one pro and one am, and the opportunity to have a couple of pit stops, the team participation in the whole event is just fantastic. Trackside, we've just heard from Ken Collier, the category manager down there. Matt Koch has just jumped into the uh, commentary booth here with me. We've got 500 kilometres together, Matt, this afternoon to uh, keep an eye on things out there and uh, plenty to talk about. I'm sure it's a race unfolds and even without that, there's still been a really good, strong lead up to this 500k race, hasn't there? It's been a really, it's a real big air of anticipation heading into the weekend. This is the granddaddy, this is the test cricket version of Australian GT Racing, Australian Endurance Championship. A championship that can trace its roots back to the early 1960s. We've got 500 kilometres ahead of us today. A brand new format that's going to throw all sorts of things up in the air in terms of strategy. All sorts of things are going to happen in terms of driver strategy as well because I've got two drivers in each car. Lots and lots to unfold over the course of the next 113 laps. About three and a half hours in somewhere in that region. Hopefully we go the distance, weather permitting, that could slow us down a little bit towards the end though. At the moment, sun is out, slick tyres, looks glorious. We are soon form up two by two. Number 63 will lead the pack alongside 911. Liam Talbot in second place. Peter Hackett taking his first pole in six years in Australian GT. Last time it was 2011 at Sandown. Safety car over race radio. The instruction is pull into pit lane. The race leader, hold your speed, 80 kilometres an hour. We are about to go. Green flag racing here. 500 kilometres, 113 laps. They get very close for comfort there. Just a little bit. How's your father before Peter we Hack get started? Peter Hackett's actually pulling Liam Talbot back in the line there. Liam shouldn't even have his nose out past Peter Hackett at this stage. He does control the pace. So much like we've seen in the Shannon's Nationals over 100 rounds, Tony Riccadello and Darren Hosshack doing that in sports sedan trim. GT trim are doing it a little bit as well. Just commanding the respect and the authority that the pole sitter has. Red lights are on, they're about to go racing. They're all a little bit messy in the middle of the pack here. The lights have gone green. We are going racing here. A little bit messy, as we say, in the middle of the pack. Down to the first corner, though, is Liam Talbot, who's got the jump. Got the and jump well, yeah. too. You wouldn't have written that one. You would have thought the, uh, the big V8 of the Merc would have gone with him there. But Liam Talbot's in a big hurry, indeed. Of course, uh, they're all Kate benefactors now, having the uh, the tyre warmers, if you like, the tyre ovens, not tyre warmers that they using and that will come into advantage as the race goes on because they've probably lost a little bit of temp just trolling around as they have been but certainly the tyres aren't bone cold they've got temp in them the wheels have definitely got temp in them because that's the method of heating them up for the start of this race Lamborghini well out of shape heading down into turn four two wheels on the grass at the exit of three major. slewed sideways down in towards turn four held it together how he managed to stay out of the door of the Ferrari alongside him is anyone's guess Peter Major 
picking it back up and getting on with it. But that shows that they're giving each other plenty of room, but they're not leaving a lot on the table. Well, look at the start Fraser Ross has got. He's up into 11th place already. The uh, McLaren driver is absolutely in a hurry. They haven't had uh, very much running at all here this weekend, but he has jumped away very well indeed. So watch for Fraser Ross. He came out of position 15 up to 11th already and driving very well. A couple of incidents a little bit further back. It looks as though uh, Adrian Dietz has picked up a spot on Jim Manoli as the two Lamborghini starting off the back row. Roger Largo being fought for position by Jeff Emery. Lamborghini versus Audi on the front straight. The Lamborghini should have the legs over the Audi when they sweep down into turn one. We start to enter the German brand's territory. The long sweeping curves of Philip Island really suiting the Audi R8 LMS here. You see Emery closing up, uses a little bit more track. In fact, he got a little bit sideways there, had to back out of it. And that's just allowed Largo to scamper clear. Watch him to close back up as they head down towards Honda. Interesting, saw the front of the Lamborghini dip pretty heavily there. I wasn't sure whether that was brakes or a bit of a bump in the road that he's found there. I wouldn't be suggesting he's grabbing the brakes that hard. It might be a dab on the brakes just to settle the car into turn one. But yeah, that car very softly sprung in the front there. It's bouncing on the brakes there. Major now, he's coming under fire of the charging car, the Optic Coat Total McLaren of Fraser Ross. It's Tony Quinn. Tony Quinn's not quite following Fraser Ross through in the McLaren. Just conservative start there for the Styx racer, the Daryl Lee car. I think it's a good exit from Fraser Ross through Siberia. Uses the power of the twin turbo McLaren engine to draw alongside of the Lamborghini and put the move done. Of course, it's probably not fighting too hard back there. It's important at this stage, just get through the opening stages. Get this early couple of laps out of the way. Then assess where you are. What pace have you got? That was Peter, uh, Peter Edwards. Edwards making a move in the Ferrari 488 GT3. Hard onto brakes into uh, into MG. The major saw him coming. It was early damage there had he not opened that door. So committed move. Meanwhile, Emery also having a look at Largo. He's got a good slipstream. Does he have the horses underneath the bonnet of the Audi? Not on that Lamborghini, he doesn't. Gee, I tell you what, Max Twig's coming at these two guys in the second. Mercedes AMG on the track there in the WM waste car and with him he's bringing James Bergmuller in the first of the BMWs as well so they're pushing pretty hard early on. Fraser Ross is definitely the big mover in the field here at this point in time in the McLaren. Total McLaren doing a good job with the South Race lead and this is the gap between one and two. In fact it's a healthy gap back now to Roger Largo six seconds so these two guys operating in absolute maximum attack both driving very very well Peter Hackett absolutely no stranger to driving Mercedes cars around this track very very fast Liam Talbot the South Welshman doing racing all around the world hasn't done a lot of racing here at Fulham Island he's done enough he's certainly done enough laps around here to know the place well but Peter Hackett would certainly have uh, put more uh, laps around this layout than uh, Liam Talbot has He's a race winner, of course, around here is Peter Hackett in Australian GT, winding the clock back to 2005. He won the first ever Australian GT race here way back when. Meanwhile, his attention at the moment is focused on the rear wing of that 911 Porsche up the road. Last time through, it was six tenths of a second between them. Liam Talbot lost four tenths the previous lap. This time through, the gap's four tenths of a second. So they're holding station out there. That's probably a wise move. They're eking the gap out quite easily from uh, Roger Largo in third place. And now 8.7 seconds up the road. They don't need to squabble. If they can just ease their way clear, they turn this into a two-horse motor race. Roger Largo doing a really good stop gap to, uh, to keep Jeff Emery, Max Twig, James Bergmuller, Tim Miles, and Fraser Ross behind him. And if he's not careful, they're going to have the uh, the Ferrari. Peter Rev was joining that party any moment now. Someone's going to have to uh, pronounce your theory to Peter Hackett at the moment, uh, Matt. I'm afraid he's on maximum attack for Liam at the moment. He doesn't want to see that Porsche get away. One of the biggest fears of anyone in endurance race is seeing a Porsche drive away from you. Because once they have, you never get it back. Have a look at this. Max Twig in the second of the AMGs on the road. The WM Waste Tana outfit. Very resplendent in its green, yellow and white. Easy to pick, as is this car. James Bergmuller at the wheel. Fraser Ross, the big challenge. This will put Fraser Ross into P7. After only three laps, he's made himself 10 spots. This is sending a very clear message that last year's winner, the McLaren, is well and truly in the hunt for this weekend's race as well. 
the battle for the third place world championship is absolutely on here we've got six or seven cars in this train Largo he's got the legs down the straight Emery's had a couple of goes can't get the move done Max Twig behind him is a little bit straight a little bit quicker in a straight line you can see the way they're now starting to separate as they squabble among each other they're much better just sitting in a row they get towed along and it's a lot quicker that way Fraser Rosso he's in a hurry he doesn't want to hang around and just get towed along in a group of six or seven cars he wants to get through this pack up into third place and then set off ahead of Peter Hackett who's half a second back from race leader Liam Talbot Fraser Ross doing a fantastic job this is on board with Peter Hackett coming out of turn two as the first couple of laps have gone through it's Talbot to Hackett Lago Emery Twig Bergmuller Ross a few that Porsche is good on the brakes in fact equally good as the Mercedes there the AMG as it dives under brakes the MV Augusta sticker on the dash there as well so supporting a little bit of Italian motorcycle sponsorship as well good to see uh, motorbikes uh, see car racing as a valid form of uh, brand awareness so Miles Edge is putting a move on James Bergmuller to change of position for seventh place at the moment the order is Liam Talbot from Peter Hackett Roger Largo still the cork in the bottle at the head of this battle for third place Jeff Emery is currently four he's got the full attentions of Max Twig Fraser Ross is uh, closing that gap as well and it's James uh, Bergmuller actually it's Tim Miles who's just lost that spot to James Bergmuller Peter Edwards as we suspected he might has joined the party so too has Peter Major we've got third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth and eleventh running nose to tail here I tell you what at this pace 130.161 done uh, just a couple of laps ago by Peter Hackett uh, and they all seem to have been settling down to one minute 30 uh, lap times um, this is going to be a quick whole race 103 laps remaining already started 110 this Lamborghini of Roger Lago she's not a new Lambo by any stretch of the imagination the REX but uh, certainly holding its own at the moment we look back down as far as Andrew McPherson to see the new GT3 Horn car Ash Smarty at the wheel now of the uh, AH Apartments outfit and it's uh, Stupas behind him as well it's a bit of a bit of an Audi race within each other there and this is, uh, this is for uh, 12th 13th on the road behind them is the uh, the Mark Griffith car the Merc and he's right into it now the Castrol Hogs Breath car goes off the back of the Ripley Strip that's not going to give him a fast run up to Siberia Ferrari now all over the back is it V8 twin turbo BMW look at that Ferrari tucked in and Peter Edwards all an amateur racer a gentleman racer but done so many kilometers in Ferraris loves them and uh, a great team behind him in the Maranello Motorsport crew does the move makes it stick Jake Bergmuller just gave him just the right amount of room not too much that it was going to be uh, all over but have a look at that Peter Edwards now takes the red Ferrari he's been wringing its neck now he's going to let it run free watch the prancing horse down the straight here at the long downhill run for the Bowling Grand Prix server the difference there is that the lap before he didn't commit that time through he absolutely committed made no bones about it clean move good positional swap between those two Edwards now on bleak clear you think of Bergmuller who's just slipped backwards as this race has unfolded over the opening nine laps still got more than 100 on the board here of course meanwhile Fraser Ross finally gets up the inside of Max Twig forces him wide Twig knowing, knowing there's not a lot of grip out there and not willing to fight too hard just dabs the brakes drops in behind the McLaren Fraser Ross grabbing fistfuls of track position in the uh, McLaren now Fraser Ross now harrying the back of Jeff Emery the battle for third fourth and fifth continues unabated meanwhile every off four wheels on the grass is going to be doing well to bring that in without looping it looks as though the car was about to point the wrong way and there it is skating backwards he should be able to get out of there okay will be slippery it'll take him some time he's going to drop a bunch of positions if not right to the back of the pack here but door opens for for, uh, for Fraser Ross and he doesn't manage to walk into it he walks through it this time there's a replay of that incident. Jeff Emery just gone in too hot, carried too much apex speed. That's run him out of road off the back of the curb. He's done well to keep it out of the barrier on the right hand side there. He bounces over the grass. 
You know, Jeff Emery, lucky man there for many, many, many years. There was uh, there was a wall right along there, and he would not have got away with spinning around on nice flat ground like he did. He would have been into the wall, and that would have been the end of the race for him. The only thing that's bruised is the ego. He'll get that car back on track. He has dropped down to 15th place after that little error. But it's a long race. We've still got some 102 laps on the board. So, you know, we're only now starting to approach 101 territory. So the race this time last year could have only just started. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is actually setting itself up for a really good event. Although we've got these two cars out in front and they're doing a really good job of it, neither of them actually making a mistake at this point in time. The, the field that is banking up behind him is one of the one behind these two is, is absolute class. Largo, Fraser Ross, Max Twig, Tim Miles, Peter Major, Peter Edwards, and then they hand over to most of them to their, their pro driver or uh, their, their seated driver and uh, we'll have another strong run out. We've got the likes of, uh, of Garth Tander, Stephen Richards, Dave, Dave Russell will be in the Lamborghini and uh, Max Twitt, he gets Tony Delberto out there. So we've got a, some real named stars of Australian motorsport we're going to be contending. And our side as well, Fraser Ross has got through on Roger Largo. So now Largo under the attentions of Max Twig. His Largo, uh, you just look at the way Fraser Ross, he's actually carved his way through all of these guys. So he's come through on major miles, Twig, Largo, and Ross is now driving away. In fact, he is decreasing the gap to the leaders very rapidly indeed. Oh, that's not what we wanted to see. That's James Bergmuller in the number 100 BMW. The question is, what has caused that? Oh, that, oh, that is that a puncture? Yeah, that's it's, crab walking. It's crabbing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there's a there's been a little bit of a touch there and there's been a tow link go and then the, the tyres are crabbing across the road rather than driving straight and that's what's basically worn it out. You have to finish this race to score points. So if you happen to retire on lap 112 of 113, you don't score points. Let's hope that the BMW crew can get James Bergmuller back into this race. James, uh, the car came in with a lot of smoke. What seems to be the problem? Yeah, we came, uh, came out of MG with an Audi on the outside. And I came out of the next corner, gave him some room to pass because he was quicker. And uh, he's given me a tap in the rear and he's hit the rear. I'm not sure what it's upright or something. The boys are working hard there. Uh, do you, what are your chances of getting back, back out on the track? Yeah, I'm sure we'll get back out. We'll be, we'll be a lot left down, though. Gee, the Porsche in straight line is, is a strong piece of kit, isn't it? Yeah, the Porsche is, is very strong. The, the Mercedes, in theory, should have the uh, the legs over down in a straight line. The, the Porsche's perhaps a little bit better through some of the corners. I've each got strengths and weaknesses, and that's the beauty of sports car racing. But Peter Hackett really starting now to get impatient on the headlights again. Liam Talbot actually on the headlights that time. I wonder if that's a signal to the pits or is he signaling these back markers that are having their own battle behind in front of them. Hackett up the inside. Talbot seen him coming. Leaves the door open. No point fighting that battle this early. There's a, a big gaggle of cars up the road. That looks like it is going to be the battle with uh, Tony Quinn, Sam Fillmore and co. So I did say Liam Talbot might want Peter Hackett to be the first one to arrive on the back of these back markers and be the pioneer and pick his way through. And, Hopefully these guys, the teams are on the radio saying, hey, race leaders are coming through. Just get out of their way. Meanwhile, replay for first place. Watch the top of the screen. We've got the, the battle pack up front here. Tony Quinn about to turn right into turn four. Up the back of shot. Meanwhile, Peter Hackett sweeps wide, takes the inside line, hide on the brakes. Talbot sees it coming. That one was more or less telegraphed from turn three. Doesn't fight too hard. No point putting up such a staunch defense at this point in the race. Tony Quinn and second place Liam Talbot heading into pit lane now. I think these two are going to uh, to start a bit of a tidal wave, if you'll excuse the pun, as yep. we uh, Peter Hackett see. in as well before yep. these two guys. In fact, our race leader, the first one into the lane, Peter Hackett in the uh, AMG Mercedes. Oh, look at this, the Bergmiller. Uh, James Bergmiller car off the track again as well. So not only have they gone down a couple of laps in the changing conditions, they've gone off the track. The charging Fraser Ross in the lane. Now Roger Largo as well. Tim Miles also in. Peter Edwards in. So everyone coming in. We're talking about splash and dash towards the end of the race. These cars now have negated that. 
We are hearing safety car. Safety car is going to go out. Conditions have deteriorated to the point where they feel the ne it's necessary to send the safety car out. Of course, we've got James Bergmuller stranded out there on track somewhere as well. And it's, it's absolute chaos in pit lane as the field as one pours in for wet tyres. You can see that the, the stacking, it's a car park there. Race leader, number 63, Peter Hackett, hugely frustrated. There he is, third in line, stacked behind Ash Samadhi stacked behind Tim Miles. He's going to go nowhere. Meanwhile, our second place car, he's also boxed in. He can't get out. Why is that Audi on stands? Or is that on the ground? Uh, They've got the air feeling jacks. that the crews have been uh, caught with uh, unaware that that rain downpour, the cars are going to come in so damn quickly because uh, they're all in there. There's uh, conversations going on between scrutineers and team managers wanting to get cars out of the way the Audi now, team have blocked the uh, the lane there now there's a porsche mechanic touching the mercedes the, the 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 audi there they can't do that they need the own team needs to push the car so it's, it's absolute chaos down there in pit lane everyone pitting at the same time some cars have managed to get back through peter hackett among them you can see the frustration in the mercedes he's thrust an arm in the air saying what was all of that wow lee the, the, this race has just been turned on its absolute head, hasn't it? We'll be back in just a couple of moments for the 100th running of the Shannon's Australian and Motor Racing Nations. Back here, trackside at the 100th running of the Shannon's Australian Motor Racing Nationals. McLaren safety car into the lane now. Max Twig now controls the pace. Peter Hackett frustrated with uh, the cards he's been dealt. Let's hope he can get the concentration level right back up there and continue on in the wet. He's OK in the wet, Peter Hackett. This should be like taking candy from a baby from him, you would imagine. They can't pass until the control line, but now they can. The parachute goes out the back of Twig as he's left powerless with those slick tyres on the wet track. Hackett takes over at the front. He's at the front of the race, but he's not at the race lead at this point. He's effectively a lap down. Our race leader continues to be Max Twig, who's dropping like a stone. I really missed a trick with uh, bringing that car in. He should have stopped it. They would have bought it in and, uh, and popped out somewhere at the tail end of the lead lap, perhaps fifth or sixth place. As it is, they're now going to effectively lose a lap, if not more, as they trundle around on the wrong tyres and still have oh, to come McLaren to the goes through on Peter Hackett. So, for the first time, an English car leads this race. Peter Hackett succumbs to the charging McLaren, the total entry. Opticote of Fraser Ross, who is driving the race of his life here today. Number 124 car there, the KFC Audi. That's our race leader behind him is Liam Talbot. He's effectively second on the road. He's made up some serious progress. The first couple of corners since the restart, in fact, too surprised if he managed to pick off that Audi going through Siberia. Fraser Ross clearing off out front. He's got good wet weather pace in that McLaren. He's got some second or so advantage at this point. In, yeah. A, yeah, in quarter of a lap, he's got in front and gained a second on there. So Peter Hackett, who, who, who is strong in the wet, he doesn't mind the wet. And uh, now the compulsory pit stop window is open. Maybe this is where the advantage for Max Quick will come. He'll go to the pits now, get some wets and That'll count for a stop. Maybe he's the only car in the field that we're going to look at at the end, near the end spin. of this race. Liam Talbot and Scott Taylor spin at MG. There's a couple of other cars caught up in that as well. Ash Samadi, the number three Audi on the infield. He's now bolted that. <laughs> look at the rooster tail of dirt coming out the back of the Audi. Wow, he got away with that. I yeah. would have thought he would have stopped on the hard stuff and tried to do a 14-point turn there. He was lucky to get himself out of the infield there. There is a big drain there, so water funnels right down into that. We're seeing a charging number 75 now. There's a replay of that incident. Look for Liam Tower, the 911, the black Porsche up the inside. Looks to make the move, runs wide, gets into the back of Scott Taylor. They go around the 124. That was our effective race leader a little bit over a lap ago. He was caught up in that, as was Ash Samadhi. So cars going everywhere like pins at a bowling alley in that one. Yeah, I tell you what, Ash Samadhi avoided that bullet there. I would have. Uh, Bet your money that that thing would have gone down into uh, the drain that's off the side of the track. Well, it's not a drain, but just the amount of water that is down there. I guess they've got fresh new uh, wet tyres on, so they've got some grip underneath there and they've got uh, some 460 horsepower to put rooster tails out the back like a, a speedboat almost through there. There is Max Twig in pit lane. 
doing their best to get the car up in the air. You can see the, the timer in the top left corner of the, uh, the windscreen. Gee, some really feverish looking crew work going on, isn't there? Some uh, people pushing, pushing themselves very, very hard to try and get a change done. I'll be in there for a minute 52, so they're almost certainly going to lose at least a lap in this, plus whatever he lost out on track by circulating on slick tyres on a wet track. So Liam Talbot, after pointing the wrong way, about to reclaim top spot. Feeling he's the golden child, Liam Talbot, don't you? It's uh, working very, very well for him. I think the rainbow is following him around the track at the moment. Tim Miles at the wheel of the car in front brings the Hungry Jacks uh, logos with him. Across the front of the uh, Belvoline Jamek Pem entry. Oh, that's a big move. Look at the water <laughs> pouring out of underneath the guard there of Liam Talbot. That's how much we're seeing these uh, big Pirelli wet tyres pumping the road dry. It's coming up on Andrew McPherson now in uh, the first of the hurricanes on the road. How good was that move around the outside of Honda though? He, he made the move, he, he hung on to it. Shoot my words in there. The right order. Meanwhile, Liam Talbot now takes over as the race lead, puts Andrew McPherson a lap down. Andrew McPherson's about now two laps down on the race lead. Such as the field been shaken up with that early dousing of rain. It's looking now right down the field from race leader down to 14th now. The uh, the 88 of Peter Edwards. And he spins. He spins. He's applying pressure to. The race leader from only about four laps ago, and Peter Edwards spins, and now he does a bit of lawn mowing for the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit, as it's the woods, and uh, it's actually Peter Major at the wheel of the 48 Lamborghini, which is the Gallardo REX, the last of the series of Gallardos. Peter Edwards has gone in deep, turned in hard, applied a little bit of throttle, a little bit too much as it turned out, and there goes the back of that Ferrari. Meanwhile, Peter Hackett continues his way around Phillip Island. And there's a downpour coming down as well, greeting Peter Hackett at the exit of turn two this time round. Safety car, all right, let's see if we can try and work this out. This is really inconvenient, the safety car. Yeah, it's not what we wanted to see at all. Interesting to see what happens now. Strategically, this is probably the worst possible time for the safety car to emerge. Have a look at the damage to that door. That's quite substantial. That's a that's taken a fair whack. It has. It's, it's peeled back a good portion of the uh, of the carbon fibre on the door there. And he hadn't gone anywhere near a wall. <laughs> a good look at the car now. Gary Higgin, the man behind that car. We're going to get a restart this time through. We're hearing over race radio the safety car controlling the field. Liam Talbot in control. He'll lead the field back to the green flag. Safety car is in pit lane, so Liam Talbot controls the field. In Hackett in third place, Tim Miles in second, Fraser Ross back in fourth place. So Liam Talbot wants to get on with this. He really needs to uh, run away and hide now. The uh, gaps back now. They've come right back. They're sensible gaps. Tim Miles 2.5, Peter Hackett 9.7, Fraser Ross 15, and between them it's 7.2 and 5.5 as Liam Talbot gets the pedal to the metal and drives away. Exactly what he did at the start of this race. Stamp the authority of the mega. Porsche that he's got underneath him. By Mega, I mean the Mega Fuel sponsorship that he's managed to score for this uh, this series. Good get there. What we a couple of BMWs. Yep. Sam Fillmore and James Bergmiller really not in the running. James Bergmiller, he's uh, laps and laps and laps behind at this point in time. It's sort of like a live test session for the, for the BMW. But if they keep running, they will score championship yep. points, and that could be crucial yep. come the end of this campaign. In the last lap to go at Highlands Park, it could be the, yeah. the one that you need. Absolutely. What we learned from that safety car is that every one of these cars is good for fuel. Had they not been, they would have been in pit lane, particularly those towards the back, taking a bit of a splash and dash, top the fuel up. So what we can glean from that is that none of these cars are stressed in terms of making this distance, the distance now on fuel. A little bit of squabbling further back. There is Peter Hackett underneath the one, two, four. Oh, and the spinner. There was a spinner just in front of Peter Hack at that time, not too sure who it was. But, uh, yep, it's Ash Samadi in the number three Audi, the one that was uh, on Jacks in the fast lane in the pit lane during the first safety car session. In fact, we've just heard 
he's going to cop a penalty for that. So it's a double whammy. Not only is he parked at turn three, or turn four rather, Asamoah is going to come in pit lane. We've got some uh, some wildlife enjoying a close view of the track there on the right-hand side. They, they say the volunteer officials have got the best, best track view, <laughs> haven't they? There's a, there's a goose hiding behind yeah. the Shannon's insurance sign. When I say a goose, I mean a goose. <laughs> what a goose a of a Cape goose. A Barron goose, yeah. in fact. <laughs> So this is getting uh, pretty mixed up here. In fact, uh, Peter Hackett has gone back three spots and Fraser Ross has actually gone through on him. We're yeah. seeing uh, Liam Talbot out, John Martin in. He's got his seat insert ready to go. And there's Peter Hackett just overshooting ever so slightly the, uh, the mark there. Steering wheel off, goes up on the coat hanger. And uh, we get a good look at the dashboard being reset. Safe, safety cars out. These guys have just got a massive free kick. They're going to yes. get a compulsory pit stop because they're already in pit lane. This counts. They're going to effectively serve a compulsory pit stop with the field at safety car speeds. So these guys get a massive double whammy with this. Not only are they going to get the stop done, but everyone else is not going to be able to do theirs. Well, I guess there's the swings and roundabouts of life, isn't there? Earlier on, they got a horrendous hold up in pit lane. And uh, there's the, the fire back over the bow, if you like, but uh, they're getting back on. So Peter Hackett out, who has been pretty much masterful during this race at the wheel of the, uh, the Mercedes. Dom Story now in. Porsche lands back on the ground. Compulsory stop done. John Martin at the wheel. And Century Lab AMG Mercedes shot with its Pirellis. Leaves pit lane for Eggleston Motorsport. Chris Papadopoulos is giving last signals. Okay, we've got Andrew Rawls in pit lane after that flurry of pit stops. The cracking starts of the race just over halfway through. Everything's going to plan. Yeah, we had a good uh, good start of the race. I was in a in fuel saving mode, so I had uh, the Hackett car all over me, but I was saving fuel. So I'm like, when are you going to go around me? You know, because I'm saving fuel. I'm not going maximum maximum performance, but. You know, the rain came, we came for our pit stop, and then these Audis got in the way. It was uh, horrendous. It was really uh, unprofessional, I felt. And how difficult is it out there in these conditions? Oh, no, it's awesome in the Porsche. It's mega. <laughs> Love it. It's, uh, you know, the car's quite twitchy, so you've got to be very uh, careful. You've got to be very smooth, but the car is unbelievable. Very smooth uh, driver pit stop there. Uh, what, uh, what did you tell your co-driver? Yeah, Johnny, Johnny uh, knows what to do, you know. He's done LMP2 at Le Mans. So uh, he should teach me what to do, not the other way around. But it's very wet out there, and uh, I've got full confidence in him. Meanwhile, safety car will go around at least once more. And look how heavy it's uh, it's getting out there. The very, very dark. Let's go back down to uh, to Tony down in the lane. Tony, tough day out there. Yeah, uh, it's it's a bit rugged out there sometimes, and it's very really hard to see behind the cars, you know. And I just don't want to get in anybody's way. I'm not. I'm not, it's not a career move for me. You're just here having fun? I'm just here trying to have fun, but it's a bit difficult out there. The boys are doing a good job, you know. I'm surprised there's only been a couple of safety cars. It's, it's quite bad conditions out there, I'd say. These races really showcase the category, don't they? Yeah, look, I think it's their first endurance of end of the year. Um, you know, we just, we just carry on. It's the first one, so we've got another three to go. But, um, you know, the guys are doing a good job, I reckon, with the young guns. Meanwhile, a couple of cars peeling into pit lane as we do go green. Tim Mars heads the field. Fraser Ross in second place. He's the fourth car on the road. Mixed in there is the 911 Porsche, which is a lap down in effect, having served its first compulsory pit stop. But that's not bad. It's got one of those out of the way. It's got a driver change out of the way. John Martin now in that car. Tim Mars leaping free at the front of the race. Fraser Ross moving by James Bergmuller as well. So it's going to be in a state of flux. A number of cars in pit lane. Peter Major, Peter Edwards, Jim Minolis and Craig Baird. So Baird taking over from Scott Taylor. It's all about to get turned on its head. Still about, still have to see Miles and Fraser Ross uh, in. And Griffo as well for compulsory stops. Griffo did serve uh, one compulsory stop earlier on that hard oh, yeah. Okay, yep. Was a, pit, was, a, was a pit stop window open at that point? Compulsory pit stop window available? Ah, uh, you're right, you're right. They did a driver change, didn't yeah. they? It wasn't quite open. In fact, I think the yeah. first car in uh, was Max Twig on that 29. Yes, yeah, so, after that initial safety car. Yeah. So uh, if we look at it, uh, John Martin is the effective leader once everyone's done their first compulsory pit stop. It's still, a, it's still a two to go. Uh, sorry, two compulsory pit stops, so one to go for most. Mine doesn't look too bad here. They've got a 1 minute 19 pit stop. 
So when they come into pit lane and hand that car over to Jackson Evans, the race leader, he'll be stationary for uh, what's that, 79 seconds. So they're looking pretty handy here. That's not a lap in these conditions. They won't, they won't uh, drop out of the uh, oh, five. Oh, oh, big, big understeer slide, yeah. from our race uh, leader and Fraser Ross going through. So our race leader, it's our effective race leader, that one here. Yeah. It's our first driver to have served a compulsory pit stop with a driver change, we believe, on track. Of course, it's not going to shake out for another few laps. Fraser Ross now trying to make every post a winner. John Martin just trying to settle into these conditions and get used to it. And uh, wow, it is absolutely treacherous down the main straight there. There's a lot of standing water. There's still wind around, so we're seeing the spray being blown off. Tim Miles in now, so he'll hand over to young gun Jackson Evans. Look forward to seeing how Jackson handles these conditions. Wouldn't have done a lot of wet weather raining, uh, racing. And uh, we've got to Andrew Rawls down there with Jeff Emery jumping out of the Audi. Jeff, uh, I've been asked to ask you, are the pit stops going to plan? Uh, I'm not sure at the moment, mate. I'm not, a, I'm not a part of the strategy, but uh, obviously I've done my stint now. So uh, to be honest, I'm quite happy to be out of it and hand it over to Garth at the moment. It's pretty slippery out there. <laughs> How dangerous is that out there? Oh, mate, there's just puddles everywhere. And, you know, every, rap, every lap it's a little bit different. So um, it's really tough conditions there. And, you know, you sort of get at least one or two cars in front of you and it's like a wall of water you're driving into. So it's, it's really tricky. Oh, we've got uh, the Talbot car back in, the number 911 which has got Johnny Martin at the wheel. In fact, they're putting jack stands under that at the moment to go to work on it. Yeah, now, this is OK because this is their compulsory pit stop. You can see in the top left corner of the windscreen, they've been in the, in the lane there for about 30 seconds stationary. So this is OK. At this point, only OK. The question is, can they, can they do the rest of the race on fuel? That'll be the big question. John I Martin's only just taken over there. I reckon they're doing shocker adjustments there. I reckon he's, he's under there with Alan Keys and he'd be uh, on the clicks of adjustment there. So they're uh, making some suspension adjustments here. We're actually out of the back of the car again, so putting safety stands under. Yeah, they're attending to uh, shock absorber sounds wow. under this car. That's the question is, is that a stroke of genius or are they... Uh, is it planned? Yeah. Well, they, they were in on that 51 for their driver change. So Liam Chalmers absolutely done what he needs to do. Well, they may have They're also now. thought, well, we're going to be under wet conditions. Let's uh, let's put the car as much wet setup into the car as we possibly can whilst we have this compulsory pit stop. Our race leader is in pit lane. Peter Hackett has dived in to serve what will be his second and final compulsory pit stop. From here, they can comfortably go to the end of the race. You would think there's still 47 laps remaining, although by my maths, only about an hour left of, uh, of racing time here. So Hackett should emerge back at the head of this motor race. Peter Edwards might just sneak ahead of him in the interim, but Edwards, by my maths, also still has to come back in. So he's out of position. Chris Pither in the three car is in pit lane as well. So lots of activity down there in the closing moments. There's only two and a half minutes left in the pit window, so if you've not served it now, you've got to get it done this lap through. So, the gap between first and second. That white car turning right, that is our race leader. The second car on road, the Audi turns right now. Five and a half seconds, very little between them. Jackson Evans can now see his prey. Yellow flag at, turn, at Siberia. That's uh, Brad Shields who's gone off the Lamborghini Huracan. That it's could be a safety track, car, though, isn't it? Yeah. Did he get the, the Lamborghini out of there? Hopefully we can get another shot of that. Waved yellow flags at Siberia. In fact, he's still there. It looks like he's beached Asbury. The Lamborghini's stricken there. Now, that's going to be good news for Evans. Probably good news for Story as well, because he'll close up at the head of this race. There is the 51 Lamborghini. He's gone skating across the top of the gravel. It looks like he's even gone as far as the tyres. The safety car is out. So they'll pick up Jake Camilleri. This race now almost certain to go. Not what Jake time. Camilleri wanted either. Yeah. He really did yeah. need to just, just protect what gap he had left. Yeah, on the upside it looks as though <coughs> the, the worst you'll probably slip to now at this point is probably third. You've effectively, with the safety car, caught everyone else a lap down. Jackson Evans will be on the lead lap. Dom Storer will be on the lead lap. Camilleri's in pit lane. There it is, driver change. Mark Griffith climbing back in the Hogsbreath Cafe, number 19, Mercedes AMG GT3. But they're still only going to drop to about fourth place here. Uh, it's just a question of whether the likes of Garth Tander, Graham Smith, John Martin and co pick up a lap. 
depends where they were on the circuit when the safety car came out in comparison to the leaders they could get waved through it and end up on the tail end of the uh, the lead lap here we'll be back in just a couple of moments for the 100th running of the shannon's australian and motor racing nationals the field over the start finish line can't pass until the control line second place Dominic Story five or six cars back in the line so Evans will lead positional change a little bit further back that is Garth Tanner getting by Tony D'Alberto D'Alberto down in eighth Tander up in fifth place so it's they're all over the shop out there a mixture of different strategies and where they've been caught on the restarts and particularly when safety cars have come out meanwhile there's our leader just leaving frame now. In the middle of our shot, just behind the, uh, the Ferrari there, is our second place car. So there's very little between first and second on the road. It's currently 26 minutes past four. There's only about half an hour left in this race before the chequered flag will be shown. David Russell getting it all crossed up through Honda as he looks to put a move under by the looks of it. That was Chris Pitha. You get the feeling we're in the countdown phase to the, uh, the final segment of this race let's hope that's the last safety car we've seen so we can run wild and free for the next 30 minutes here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit it is a place that is designed to be run wild and free and these GT cars are designed to run wild and free all over it and let's uh, see how the next half an hour comes out Dominic story has got a full drink bottle there and it's actually exiting all over the uh, the passenger side of the car there so Dom, probably want to grab that tube and just take a sip out of that before it uh, gets into some electrical item you don't want water in. So Jackson Evans leads. Number 19 car on screen now. The former race leader currently in fourth place. So a really strong performance from Mark Griffith and Jake Cavalier. The work strategy absolutely supremely here today. In fact, the nearest competitor is a lap behind them. That's Garth Tanner, the number 74 Audi. So that was ahead of him on track that he's... Uh, a lap back in effect so Evans from Story there is Story putting a move on the number eight Mercedes that's for a lap down Tony D'Alberto at the wheel there so Dominic Story just picking off the cars between he and race leader Evans one by one there's some weekends where your car's just operating in the in the window that it needs to be in the conditions that you're uh, experiencing and uh, these guys have been pretty quick uh, all weekend from when they rolled it out of the truck there was some demon tweaks going into qualifying with uh, the amalgamation of the two times and both Dominic Story and Peter Hackett can claim that pole because that's the way the system was run it was designed to make both driver main driver and co-driver be fast and the combination has worked well so far meanwhile number 59 McLaren on screen that is your third place car carving through some traffic at this point Warren Luff at the wheel, 31.3 through the first sector. He's lost some 1.4 seconds to race leader Jackson Evans just in that part of the lap alone. Luff is in this. Absolutely. It's only uh, well and truly in this. 14.8 seconds of difference. Yeah, storming drive uh, early on by Fraser Ross, a long stint too for yeah. Fraser. That he opening lap. He went long and he had uh, a good, good run at it, set the car up. And, uh, well, any time you hand the car over to Warren Luff, you're, you're looking for him to bring it home strong, and he uh, answers the call every single time. Yeah, Fraser Ross did 56 laps earlier on before handing over to Warren Luff, who's now aboard the number 59 McLaren 650S GT3, scraping in on the back of Chris Pitha, who at number three already a couple of laps adrift at this point in the race, so should move by the Audi reasonably quickly here, you would think. He sets off in pursuit of Dominic Story up the road he's about 10 seconds up the road from Luffy at this point but we do have about 30 minutes or 28 minutes left in this motor race 28 laps left on the clock that's not going to happen Jackson Evans and Dom Story our race leaders Evans half a second a lap quicker on that lap so the, uh, the distance between the two front runners just elongating at this point Evans looking ever more comfortable the longer he's in that car he's not got a lot of time in the Audi First time in it this weekend. He's driven in the Australian 
Endurance Championship or the Australian GT Championship previously in a Lamborghini at the tail end of 2016. But first time sampling the Audi. Same for uh, Tim Myers, who doesn't have a lot of laps in it. First time he jumped in the car was at the Grand Prix as round two of the Australian GT Championship. So not a lot of experience in that car. But what they're showing is that between them, they've got plenty of skill, plenty of pace. And strategically, the team back in the bunker has called this absolutely spot on for them. Get out to Rolls in pit lane. Well, I'm with one very nervous co-driver here, the young fella. He's going all right out there. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. I mean, real quick. The conditions are very, very, very difficult, but um, he's just kept his head doing a fantastic job. So it's not over yet. How's the race strategy planned out for you? Obviously, uh, things are all going to plan. Yeah, I mean, we, it, as soon as it rained, we came in quite early, got wets on. The car's just fantastic. I mean, the car's driving me when I was out there. It's, it's really, really, really good in the wet. So um, it was just a case of um, keeping out of trouble and then hanging over jets and then the boots down. Looks a bit brighter out there now. You can see the, uh, the clouds have certainly lifted. The headlight's still taking full effect, but that's more the fact that the sun's disappearing out west rather than the, uh, the heavy skies masking it. This will be tricky if the sun's going to come out now as they come across Lukey Heights with the spray looking directly into that uh, that, that setting sun, if you like. The windows uh, in front of them, even though all of the wipers are on, they'll be greasy. They won't be uh, optimised for vision at this point in time, I would suggest. And they'll start with a couple of tear-offs on the windscreens and they'll peel them off as they come into the pits. But they've not been into the pits for a while now. In fact, the last round of stops was you know, sort of lap 65, 66 sort of time. So that was 30 laps ago. They'll have all sorts of dirt and grit and oil and rubbish littering them. 100 laps. And they're coming up left, yeah. Only six or seven minutes left on the clock here. Two more laps. We'll, we'll get to 101. That won't be a problem when we get to 102 or maybe 103. Meanwhile, will John Martin get bar past Graham Smythe? Seventh versus sixth, rear engine Porsche versus mid engine Ferrari. Flat six versus twin turbo V8. The first twin turbo V8 Ferraris produced since the Ferrari F40 of the late 80s and early 90s. My favorite, my bedroom wall car as a child. Meanwhile, that is a change for position. Our Garth Tander watch for 65 seconds. He's finally got to grips with Jake Camilleri. Caesars fourth place from the Mercedes AMG GT3 driver. Garth Tander proves he is the magic man and he's doing it now again. We talk about it dancing with hands and feet and that's what Garth Tander's doing. He's a tall guy, probably wouldn't want to see him on the dance floor, but boy, behind the wheel of a race car, this guy is aggressive every time he gets behind the wheel. Sometimes it's controlled aggression, sometimes it's let loose aggression. And this is control, you cannot be super attack aggressive in these conditions. There's the Porsche through on the Ferrari, so Graham Smythe, no answer there. And that car's starting to move around a little bit too, so it's uh, Pirelli's are screaming out for mercy on the silver wheels for the, uh, the last run of the flag there. As we cross over to our race leader, that's not our race leader, the car in front. There he is, number 75, his teammate right behind him, setting themselves up for a bit of a one-two. The uh, Audi's of the photographers on the line being paid to capture the Valvoline result here, but it is one and four on the road as Jackson Evans comes through and he's got Garth Tander, I would say. He's had a poster on his wall. That's smart. Brings him onto the lead lap. Yeah, if anyone now behind Jackson Evans falls off the road in this final lap, Garth Tander will get him. That's very clever thinking by Jackson Evans. A young man who crosses the line to win the opening Australian Endurance Championship race of 2017. The first time he's won an Australian GT race. The same can be said for Tim Miles. They start celebrating down there on pit lane. Great drive from Peter Hackett and Dominic Story to second place as well. Super stuff from the Mercedes AMG GT3 pairing. Third place we expect will be Warren Luff. Some 30 odd seconds back down the road. Super drive from Jackson Evans. What? And, and to have that presence of mind to let your teammate go back through just in case. Here comes Warren Luff. He'll bring home for third place, completing 102, 103 laps in the 113 race distance. And Warren Luff brings it home into P3. So the driver of the day really was Fraser Ross in that car. He really did a fantastic result. And uh, we've got Andrew Rawls in the pit lane, I dare say, with a very happy Audi crew. 
Tim Miles, congratulations. Uh, CAMS Australian Endurance Championship race winner. How are you feeling? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, Jackson did such a good job. It was a long, long stint. He was in there for 56 laps or something and a uh, long time to be in the car and he's done a fantastic job. So it was really good. Big, big team effort, great car to drive, really enjoyable race. Congratulations, well done. Tony, over to you. Thanks, Rawlsy. I've got Peter Hacker with me. Peter, congratulations. Second place. It's not first, but it's damn good. Yeah, look, we were close. Uh, obviously, everybody saw what happened in pit lane. Uh, I'm sure Australian GT won't let that happen again. Uh, but a fantastic drive by Dom Eggleston Motorsport gave us uh, an unbelievable car. The AMG GT3 was so so consistent, it was so predictable. And uh, we're one better than last year. This is a fantastic start to the year. Congratulations, Pete. Thank you very much. Jackson Evans takes the win in the Audi R8 LMS2 with Tim Miles, of course, who set that up in the number 75. He did a long stint early, put it in a good spot, and Jackson Evans brought it home. Dominic Story and Peter Hackett not quite able to get the job done in second place, but came back from a, a really strong hurdle early in the race. So good drive from them. Warren Luff and Fraser Ross. What a recovery from those guys. Garth Tander and Jeff Emery in P4. Really strong result from them. And probably my drive of the race, Jake Camilleri and Mark Griffith, the guys impressing to take fifth. We've got Jackson Evans with Andrew Rawls in the lane. Jackson Evans, what a drive. Yeah, thank you very much. I sort of got in, didn't have much work to do, thanks to a co-driver, Tim, but um, uh, the team at MPC gave us a great car and we sort of blasted on the tyre and we weren't too sure what the weather was going to do, but um, after we realised it wasn't going to rain and hopefully, oh, we were hoping on no more sausages, I was able to sort of push on, get a bit of a gap and, you know, have it come away with the win. And you had some uh, red-hot drivers and some red-hot cars uh, chasing you down right till the end there. Yeah, even Garth behind me sort of at the restart, um, even though he was a lap down, I knew that he was going to be fast and I wanted to get past and get that lap back, but um, no, I, was, I was happy with our car speed and uh, big thanks to the guys at MPC and also my co-driver Tim. Would you please congratulate in third place from McElroy Racing, YNA Autosport, Fraser Ross and Warren Luff. <laughs> in second place from Autotex, Eccleston Motorsport, Peter Hackett and Dominic Storey. And our race winners, the Valvoline Audi pairing of Tim Miles and Jackson Evans. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, our place getters in the first round of the Australian Endurance Championship for 2017. It's been a fantastic weekend here from the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. We go to round 101 at Winton Motor Raceway. We look forward to seeing you all there and right throughout the rest of the 2017 season. I'm Darren Smith and we'll see you in two weeks time at Winton.